Before we start this video, a large thank you to Mario, Manuel, and Abel for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Hello everybody, and today we're going to sync our equipment across the network. This is our head, body, legs, and hand equipment. So let's open up the player or the character network manager. It depends on if you want to do this um, and sync it for your AI, if they have their custom equipment too. Or if you're only syncing armor for players, because if the player is the only thing that changes armor in your game, then you just put this in the player network manager. So I'm going to start by going to my header equipment, and right under that, uh, the left and right weapon, I'm going to make a new network variable of type int. I'm going to call it current head equipment ID. Going to say this is equal to a new network variable, uh, int, initialize it at zero, and the read and write permissions are the same. Everybody for the read and only the owner for the write. This is the same for all of our variables uh, so far. So let's talk about what we're going to do here. We're going to do the same thing with the weapons, and we're basically going to make it so when you, the owner of your player, switches your armor, you're going to update this network variable, and then everybody else who has a copy of your object in their scene representing you is going to change their armor depending on what this ID is. So basically, we're going to get the armor uh, using its ID from our world item database, and then we're going to switch it that way. Uh, and we're, if we don't have an armor piece, we're going to use a value of negative one, and that will just make it null. And if it's null, it's just going to equip the naked uh, piece. So for example, if you try to equip a chest plate that doesn't exist, um, you'll just uh, go back to your default torso. So I'm going to copy the on right weapon change, and I'm going to change this to on head equipment change. And then change it from new weapon and old weapon ID to old equipment and new equipment ID. Just going to rename some things to keep it general so we can copy and paste this four times for all the equipment pieces. Going to change a weapon to equipment. And I am going to change the variable type of weapon item to, I think we have it called a helmet or head equipment. So we'll start with that. We might well just use uh, the general equipments variable um, and basically just cast it. So we'll see. So helmet equipment. Uh, and I can't remember if it's called get head equipment or if we even made one for that. Let me check real quick. It might just be a general equipment fetch. So I'm going to go to the world item database and peek it. And yes, it is actually general. So let's change this to equipment item and it's get equipment item by ID. Now this is never going to get the wrong equipment slot because uh, we're basically going to only check this against what the player is wearing in their head slot and they'll only be able to equip head equipment. So you'll never accidentally get a body equipment in the place of this. So we're gonna say, if the equipment is not equal null, character.characterInventoryManager.CurrentHelmetEquipment equals equipment as uh, head equipment item or helmet equipment item. And remember, we're getting this equipment item by getting the network ID and then searching for items by their ID from our world item database. Same thing we do with on saving and loading as well. So copy that and paste it, change head to body. And we're gonna do the same thing here. Uh, we're just going to change this from helmet equipment to body equipment and our current head equipment in our player inventory will become current body equipment. Do the same thing again for the legs and the hands. And while I do that, I'm just going to uh, talk about some stuff uh, regarding these systems. So again, what we're doing is, is when you, the owner, changes your armor, every armor piece in our game has an ID. So if you change your helmet, for example, to a knight's helmet with an ID of 20, it's going to tell the network, hey, this person has a helmet on and the ID is 20. And then we're going to run these on uh, whatever equipment change events, and they're going to get a, an equipment item using their ID from our world item database. And they're just going to basically change that equipment on every other character's uh, side to whatever you've changed yours to on your end for your game object. So it's pretty simple. It's the same thing as the right and left weapon, but with our equipment. The only difference being if we have null, we're just going to make it no equipment, which will default to you being naked. So over on the on network spawn on your player manager, right below the player network manager dot current right and left weapon on value changed, we're gonna do the same thing with our equipment. So it'll be player network manager dot current head equipment ID dot on value changed plus equals player network manager dot on head equipment change. So do the same thing for body, leg, and hands. Again, just saying that whenever the owner of the network variable head equipment changes that number, then every game object uh, across all connected players that represents that owner will run this function on that game object. So as you know, that function is just going to check and basically it's just going to change the equipment depending on the ID that was given or changed. Okay. So now back over on equip all armor, this is on the player equipment manager. We could separate this into individual calls for like head, leg, body, and, um, hands, but we don't need to, so we're just going to go and say right at the bottom here, if player dot is owner, and we're going to say player dot player network manager dot current head equipment ID is equal to 
player inventory manager current head equipment dot item id we need to check for owner because remember only owners can change the network variables so we're going to put this now copy and delete this uh the statement and put it wherever the head equipment is so it'll be current helmet equipment i keep saying head equipment dot item id all right so let's copy and delete this and find i think we have comments on where head equipment is yeah so see hand equipment that's not what we're after and then there's leg there's body and here's the helmet equipment so if it's not null, this is what you do. So make sure you're putting inside the brackets or if it's not null. Um, and if it is null, we're just gonna set it to minus one because that will give us a null item when we're trying to check our database and that'll just make it naked. So, cause it's, we're never gonna have an equipment item with a negative one item ID. So right here, if it is null, uh, the current head equipment ID is negative one. That will return a null on the other end and just equip nothing. Now, do the same thing for the body. Just copy and paste what you had here, but replace head with body. Make sure you're checking for owner because if you try to change the network variable when you're not the owner, um, you will get an error. And you don't want that anywhere. You want it so only the owner is telling everybody else what he has equipped. So uh, basically this makes it so a person on the other end can't change your equipment if they're not you and they're not coming from your local client ID. Okay, so this is good. Just remember, set it to minus one if there is nothing. Make sure you're putting that in the null statement. So right now, if current leg equipment is not null, set it to my current leg equipment item ID. And if it is null, the player dot player network manager dot current leg equipment ID is equal to minus one. I know I'm moving kind of fast, guys, but this is uh, very similar to what we did before. If you would like me to slow down, though, in these explanations, please uh, say so in the comments. Um, I'm just trying to find a happy medium between getting the content out and also getting enough of the description out so it's understandable. Um, so this is going to be the same thing for the hand equipment. And we need to do a couple more things and then we're ready to test it out. So the same problem arises as before where we also need to do it. So if you join mid game, we need to sync uh, um, the equipment for every player who's joined. So, and also we need to make it so we're actually changing the equipment on these uh, on these calls. So if the head equipment is not equal null, we're equipping that stuff in the slot. Else, we're going to say character dot character inventory manager dot whatever equipment slot is equal to null, and then we call uh, player dot player equipment manager dot equip all armor. So first, I'm just going to fill in these uh, these null calls here. So if it does equal null, make sure you're assigning the armor slot to null, because remember, if you get a value of minus one, you're not going to find a piece of equipment using the world item database, so it will be null. And that's when you want to assign the armor slot as null also. Now we need to go back through all these functions and call equip all armor. I can't remember if I did a character equipment manager or not. I don't think I did because in this project, I didn't uh, set it up with the intent of AI switching armor. So let's just see. Yes, I did not. So I'm going to copy all of these functions now and basically delete them from here and put them on the player network manager because the player is the only person who's going to be actively switching their gear. If you want to make it so AI can switch their gear, you can just basically make a character equipment manager and do the same thing. Um, it works the exact same way. But in Souls, only the player is switching their gear ever, to my knowledge. So we're going to keep it that way. So on the player network manager, I pasted this. Let's uh, make a player manager variable called player and let's override the awake, call the base awake and then just assign our player as player equal get component player manager because it rests on the same game object as this player network manager. And then from there, we'll replace the word character with the word player representing our player manager variable. And then at the end of it all, we're just going to simply say player dot player equipment manager dot equip all armor. And as you can see, it says if we're the owner, we're returning. So we're not going to run this code on the owner again because we've already equipped it using our player equipment manager on our end locally. So this will just run for every other um, person who has your game object in their scene representing you. So it just syncs your armor with whatever you've equipped locally on your end. So we're just going to say player dot player equipment manager. And I've spelled that wrong. Whoops. Player equipment manager dot equip all armor. Uh, and then just do the same thing at the end of every single one of these um, on value changed functions. Now, if you wanted to, you could uh, basically make it so there's separate functions for the head, body, leg, and hand equipment. So it's not being called multiple times, that's up to you. I'm gonna keep it the same right now because this works fine and it's not at a detriment of a big memory cost or anything. Make sure you go to your world item database and make sure you have your equipment items inside your database or else this will not work. This is the same for saving loading. If they're not there, you cannot reference them via their IDs because they don't exist in the database. So that would be entirely impossible. Um, after I drag all these in, I'm going to drag my prefab in, in the inspector, so it saves it. And then I'm gonna save the game and I think we are ready to test this now. I believe this should work. So I'm going to go to the world item database prefab, drag that down there, and that saves it. 
and we're good to go. Gonna save my scene, open up my uh, other client, and I forgot, let's go to the load other player characters when joining uh, online. We wanna say player dot player network manager dot, and we wanna call all of our equipment uh, change functions. So on equipment change, zero, because it doesn't matter what the previous one was, we only want the current one. Player dot player network manager dot current head equipment dot uh, ID dot value, and call the exact same thing for every other piece. This makes it so if you join mid game, uh, all the armor and items still sync up. The same deal as our left and right weapon. So it will just sync all the equipment when you join, as opposed to being there instantly. Because when you join, technically, the variable didn't change. It already was what it was. So because of that, it won't actually run the uh, on head equipment or on body equipment change or whatever. But we call this function when we join uh, any player as a new player. So we're just syncing up every player model in the scene, syncing all their equipment. So this should work now. So what we're gonna do is go into the scene. I have my uh, other client open and connected. Let me save this, drop down. You can see I'm wearing a knight's chest plate. So when I join on the other client, they should be wearing no shirt and they should see that this client is wearing a knight's chest plate. So let's do that. So I'm running it, there I am. And yes, as you can see, I'll show you now. I'll drag this over to the screen. Um, I am wearing nothing on this end, but they are wearing their knight's chest plate. Even if I go to their player game object here in my scene, you'll see that in their inventory. So this one right here, it says Knight's chest plate. So that is working as intended. Now guys, uh, syncing like anything really uh, from rings and whatever else is much the same. So again, I can cover uh, other items like ring items if you want, but it's identical. So if you don't want me to cover that, I will move on and just go to uh, basic effects like taking damage and calling damage from uh, you know a host or a client. That will be the plan for the next video. Uh, if you would like to see me cover anything else instead before that, let me know. But if not, we're going to start moving on to things like actual effects and events, syncing if AI is dead or alive in the scene when you join, all that good stuff. All right, guys, as usual, if you made it this far, be sure to drop a like and a comment. It does actually genuinely help out the series so much. I know I sound like a broken record. I appreciate each of you that do that so much. You have no idea. Also, a special thank you to my patrons. I appreciate all you guys so much. You're the reason I get to keep doing this, and I love doing this. And if you want some more netcode stuff and you haven't checked it out already, I really suggest checking out the Elden Ring and Unity series. It's got a lot of valuable information there. And uh, since it's from the very beginning, I feel like it's easier to digest if you're new to netcode versus we're kind of like refactoring this right in the midst of it all. So the explanations as to why things are working with each other would not be as clear, uh, in my opinion, as if you've seen it from the ground up. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have a lovely week and I will see you guys in the next episode.